CQ, CQ, brand new battery technology, Zinc Air from Quantum Sphere. Let's take a look and see how they make this new battery technology work for us as Ham Nation ham radio operators. Kevin Maloney, President and CEO of Quantum Sphere. Kevin, um, what do we got? So hi, Gordon. Thanks for having us today. This is uh, our Meta Portable Power Systems. It's based on Zinc Air technology. It's about a 200-year-old battery chemistry that's been around uh, since the 1800s, and so we did not invent that chemistry. We simply developed a, uh, a better engine inside for that cell and a better sort of gas and oil, if you will, to run that cell more efficiently. And so that allows us to get a lot more uh, power per kilogram and deliver uh, some impressive results to people that are working off the grid or in an emergency situation where they don't have access to reliable power. So Gordon, inside the uh, portable power system here, we basically have a seven by eight inch by 15 inch box. We call it a sort of a personal portable power plant. You can carry it around with you and uh, it's got a hermetically sealed lid. So it's uh, got an O-ring inside. And the zinc air is an interesting chemistry because you want to keep the air uh, sealed away from the battery. As soon as you break the seal, air flows in and you have current or electricity happening. What you do with that is up to you. You can recharge your cell phone, if you will, like I've done here through the USB port. This is in a uh, typical inverter uh, that uh, comes with the cell. Uh, the, the stack, it's 150 watts, uh, two AC outlets, 110 volts, a USB. Uh, for, you, know, there's a, you can run light at night if you want. If you're off the grid in a disaster situation, you can run light. Uh, you can, if you're in a hot environment and uh, you want some, uh, some airflow, you've got you know, a fan you can turn on. Um, so you're charging your fan, you're running a fan, you're charging your phone, you're running a fan, you're running lights. Uh, most people want, obviously, to recharge or run electronic equipment. So, for example, you can just plug in, I'm going to charge my laptop here. Um, and in emergency situations, from what we've learned, a lot of people want to obviously run or charge their electronic portable emergency communication devices. Ham radios, there's an Anderson power pole connector you can just connect directly here and, and uh, you've got power off the grid when you want it. So this will do about 8 to 10 amps and about 13.2 volts delivered. That's uh, closed circuit voltage. So you've got uh, you know, over 100 watts of, uh, of, of power there. And compared to a lead acid battery, uh, how much longer will this run at, let's say, 4 to 5 amps? Yeah, so we just did that test. Uh, the lead acid battery, let me ask our tech, ran about 50, 50 hours. And uh, in the lab here, we ran the MedAir system about 200 hours. Wow, a four times increase, huh? At half the weight. That's exactly right. Yeah, so it's pretty important. And if you're, you know, if you're a military guy working in a tactical situation, weight is everything. If you're uh, packing your boat for the weekend and you're off the grid and you don't have a generator, weight is very key. And backup power is important for GPS, nav lights, satellite phones, radios, etc. Um, the backpackers, the outdoor enthusiasts, uh, it's important. And then the uh, first responders, uh, weight is everything, and they want power when the grid is not available when we're away from the outlet to r run lights and most importantly communication devices. Uh, proprietary recipe of high surface area carbon and our um, QSI nano manganese catalyst. The anode is um, it's recycled zinc powder and uh, the electrolyte. Okay. Okay. So after we've uh, we've blended our mix under uh, some high intensity uh, G force. We take one last step and we actually grind it up in an espresso grinder to um, get it prepared one last time for our cathode machine. So it comes out, it's uh, nicely finely ground and ready to be rolled out in our cathode machine. This is our uh, cathode production machine. Um, I'll take our cathode mix that we just finished blending up over there and I'll add it to our machine where we have some fixed width rollers um, which will actually take the, the cathode mix and it actually rolls it out into a sheet of um, pressed carbon and catalyst mix. Um, 
once that catalyst mix and it is rolled out into a nice sheet, I'll take it and I'll lay it on top of a nice nickel screen that we use um, as the current collector for the battery. It gets then rolled itself uh, again and the carbon gets laminated onto the nickel screen. Um, and then there's one last step which is uh, coming up next, which is where we laminate a Teflon layer on top of there, which is a hydrophobic layer, which keeps water out, but keeps the air moving through the gas breathing um, cathode. And once that's finished, we now have a completed cathode ready to go into the battery cell. Okay, so once we have the, the finished gas diffusion electrode, um, we take it and we cut it to size, uh, so it'll actually go and fit inside. Um, this is one of our prototype cells here, essentially. So we'll, we'll cut it to size and make sure that it's glued in here. Um, we've got the cathode on one side, we have a separator on the other side, and this is where the actual zinc paste will go, so the anode fuel will go on this side right here. But um, this is the, the first steps for the cell right here. Now that zinc paste, uh, where do you get the zinc? Um, it's a recycled zinc. Uh, it comes from a byproduct of steel manufacturing. So then uh, a company that we buy it from takes the, the waste material and refines it and recycles it. And then that's where we buy the zinc from. So it's a recycled, clean, green zinc material that we use. So here's the finished prototype of our new MET air cells. This is the, the hand-built one. This is the new designed mass-produced cell. Um, it's got our logo on the back. It's got, this is the holes for the air breathing part of the cell so the air can actually get to the cathode that we just saw being produced um, and make the power from there. So this is our new, new cell here. Here's our Ham Connection, Ham Nation viewers and listeners. Tracy, WA6ERA, that puts these packs to use, right, Tracy? That's right, that's right. Um, about uh, five months ago, uh, discovered here uh, the company that was putting these together for a special application to take them to uh, Mount Everest and Mount Vincent. And uh, my friends that do that climb uh, told me about this during one of our uh, events where we were doing emergency communications up in the Big Bear area, in Lake Arrowhead area. And so they loaned me one of these to try to see if that might be of interest to ham radio operators that are doing emergency communications. The no load uh, voltage coming out here is about 21 volts. And under load, it drops down to about 19. And we need to have that voltage the way the cells are built so that we can have current that's in the range of between 8 and maybe as much as 15 uh, amps. So what we did is we've come up with a little uh, re voltage regulator here that can handle the current. It can handle 15 amps. And it will bring us down to a fix. Right now we have it fixed at 13.6 volts. And under load, heavy load on a uh, radio, it drops down to about 13.5 volts. So about one-tenth of a volt drop is all under load. So this takes the uh, 19, 21 to 19 down to the voltage that we need for the work we want to do. This particular battery here, which weighs a little bit less than a big 35 amp hour battery, it weighs about a pound less, actually gave us during some tests we just ran about 200, uh, 200 uh, amps out of here, amp hours out of here. Uh, of the 24 cells uh, inside the battery, they weigh about uh, 240 grams per cell. So that's a total uh, multi-cell stack weight of about 13 uh, pounds or so. Uh, in, in each cell, there's about 150 grams in anode fuel paste, the zinc and electrolyte I mentioned a moment ago. And, uh, and so you get about uh, at 0.82 amp hours per gram of zinc you're getting about 73.8 amp hours uh, per cell. We have two in parallel, uh, 12 in series in this particular size device. There's many different sizes based on the amperage, voltage, or current, desired current. Uh, and for this particular stack here, um, Tracy mentioned this one here was around 200 amp hours. This particular smaller version is about 132 amp hours for the entire stack. Again, about 13.2 volts. Uh, closed circuit voltage. Uh, if you take the theoretical um, 73.8 amp hours per cell and you times that by about 0.9, the efficiency, 90% efficiency, and you times that by about 1.1 volts under load, you get about 73 watt hours uh, per cell. Uh, if you take that 73 times 24 cells, you get about uh, 1,753 watt hours uh, for the entire 24 cell, cell stack, again, um, two in parallel, 12 in, in series at 13.2 volts. 
So in this particular system, we have uh, more than 300 watt hours per kilogram, the specific energy. And lead acid is typically 30 to 35. So depending on the size of the case we wrap around the stack, we're always about eight to 10 X the specific energy of lead acid. In this particular system, we're about half the weight uh, so we're getting 4x delivered capacity at half the weight, which is pretty impressive. Uh, the first responders we spoke to were, were very impressed about the long shelf life, uh, the safety, and the ready and availability and reliability of the power system when it's, when it's needed. So Kevin, is this expensive technology? Uh, uh, nothing's cheap about uh, the, you know, portable power, but uh, we do deliver a lot of safety, security, and peace of mind. So with that in mind, we're targeting on these pre-production units about $400 for the entire system. Obviously the bigger systems with more amperage or voltage requirements would, would be a little costlier, but that basically equates to about 120 per kilowatt hour which is uh, quite uh, compelling to the users that are off the grid.